Now these days, batteries are one of the sexiest things when it comes to business. Everyone wants to have gigafactories making loads of batteries for electric cars. It's the big new thing. But here's a couple of interesting, perhaps unexpected little nuggets. Back in the day, the first country where lithium-ion batteries were actually invented was actually the UK. They were invented in Oxford. The chemistry, the main bit of the chemistry for the cathodes was invented in Oxford back in the 80s. And second fact, a lot of people assume that we, didn't, we never really made batteries in this country, that mostly they were made off in, in Asia. Actually, they were. And this place is part of the answer there. We are in the northernmost town in mainland uh, Britain, Thurso, just near John O'Groats. And we're in a factory uh, that is these days part of a company called Amti. It used to be called AGM. And this machinery has been making uh, batteries, lithium-ion batteries, for decades. This whole place goes back kind of 30 years or more. And it was making them not for camcorders, but for military applications, radios, things like that. And you can see the machinery here. It's a fascinating process. Um, this is where you're basically baking uh, the materials, the important chemicals, onto thin uh, bits of sheets of foil, basically, kind of aluminium foil and copper foil. And that gets kind of baked onto them, and you end up with either a cathode or an anode. They're kind of a long stream of metal coat coated with chemicals. And then it goes through here, this kind of bit, bit like ovens where it's coating them and baking them. It goes all the way along here, along in these rolls. And what you get at the end is a kind of a roll of this stuff. It's foil, but it's got the chemicals on the outside. Okay, so that looks like that's a cathode there because it's got aluminium foil. But come over here and we'll show you what happens to that next. So it starts, it starts off over there. And then it goes here and it gets kind of, this is a kind of called a calendaring machine and this is where it gets compressed. So it goes through all of these different rolls, making it, getting it down to kind of micron thickness. It goes, and once it ends up after that machine, um, you've got a whole other set of processes, which, you know, too many for us to show you just uh, in one go. Uh, but also you're slicing the, the different kind of anodes and cathodes uh, into, the, into the right kind of shape there. And what you end up with are a number of different types of cells. And what's interesting about this place, okay, is that they have exciting new plans for the future to make cells that go into kind of high performance cars, cells that you can put in under the bottom of the ground and not need to replace that last for six years, cells that are for energy storage, so sodium iron uh, batteries, so not quite lithium iron, but sodium iron batteries, these kinds of things. You can put them away for storage, and that's going to last for a long time. It says ultra safe. That's because sodium, it's sodium ion. It's basically cut through that. It's not going to explode like a lithium ion battery. But what's interesting about this kind of situation and where we are right now at the moment is the US is pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into batteries, into renewable energy. Europe is doing something similar as well. The UK is not. And that's raising questions about whether a business like this, quite an important business with a big history behind it, really wants to invest in the UK or whether they're looking at what's happening in the US and saying, oh, maybe that's a better deal over there. So big questions for the UK government about what they, whether they're going to support the energy transition.